Howdy hackers, I am shockingly well lit spicy and today we're going to talk about probably the gayest attack in infosec, rainbow tables. So let's start with the basics on this, just so we can see like what rainbow tables are attempting to solve. Um, hashing is essentially encryption's non-committal brother, where instead of scrambling the fuck out of text and then being able to unfuck it at some point, uh, with hashing, it's just permanently fucked, making it what's called a one-way cipher. Now, hash cracking, on the other hand, is an attempt to make it a two-way cipher by essentially doing the crypto uh, cryptographic equivalent of throwing shit at the wall and seeing what sticks. Now, the two most common ways to do this are either brute forcing, where you just come up with random shit, uh, hash that, and then compare it to your target hash, or you can also do what's called a dictionary attack, which is essentially you take a word list uh hash each entry in the word list it's separated by line uh you hash the line and then you compare that to your target hash so the problem is both of these kind of suck in their own special way while brute forcing is incredibly reliable because you can just keep like you know coming up with shit and chucking at the problem uh, the problem is, assuming you don't have, like, some sort of, like, big dick quad GPU Skynet motherfucker, and even then it, you know, still might take a minute, uh, it might not happen within the lifespan of the average human or civilization. Meanwhile, dictionary attacks also suck because while it doesn't have to spend uh, resources on coming up with strings to hash or anything like that, and you technically can make a word list a bit more bespoke to the target hash or the hash that you're trying to crack, you still have to store that word list somewhere. And sometimes those bad boys can get like massive, like obese Clifford the dog thick. Like we're talking exabytes sometimes, man. It's it's a little bit insane. So this is great. We're either going to never pop the hash or the ice caps are going to melt before we do crack it. What do we do? Well, turns out some whiz kid Swiss dude back in like the late 90s, I'm pretty sure, figured out how to get the reliability of brute forcing to be kind of about as lightweight as dictionaries by essentially pre-hashing text and sticking it right by the original plain text, which at first glance sounds like dictionaries with extra steps, which a lot of people do implement it that way, looking at you, Leprechaun. But that's essentially what's just called a uh, hash table or a hash lookup table or a lookup table. You know, there's a lot of names for it. But and it doesn't really address the whole time space balance that Rainbow Tables is all about. It's it's a bit more of a mind fuck than that. The big kicker here with Rainbow Tables is the reduction functions that they utilize. Uh, where during table generation, the hash gets reduced into some sort of plain text and then gets hashed and then that just repeats over and over and over again. And these functions can be whatever you want pretty much. Like if you want like all the combinations of numbers or whatever, well you can just start out with some numbers, hash that, pull the numbers out of the hash, then hash that, and then, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Or like if you want some like special characters in there, uh, you, can th you can throw it th uh, through a uh, rotate uh, cipher or something like that. And because you essentially made a chain of hashes where each hash bleeds into the next, like a rainbow, conveniently enough, all the final rainbow table is, is just the starting text, like the seed text, uh, if you will, and then the final hash generated for each function. And for each function that you have, it's just line separated. Now, to actually crack the hashes with the table, it's pretty much the same thing, except in this instance, you're applying the reduction functions to the target hash and comparing it to the final hashes in the table. If at some point uh, the target hash matches one of the final hashes, then you know that hash is somewhere in that chain, which at that point, all you have to do is regenerate that certain chain until you get to the step where your, you know, target hash is. So what killed this co colorful cracking capability in the eyes of many a Stack Overflow warrior? Well, it was a couple things. Aside from collisions, which is what happens when a hash generates the same hash for two different bits of text, which, you know, is not only a pitfall for, you know, most hashing algorithms, it's also a pitfall for hash cracking and, or other hash cracking tools in general. Uh, the biggest thing that people are bitching about is salt. N not 
actual salt, mind you, like, like not the shit you shoot at insects or like internet uh, people's salt. All a cryptographic salt is, is just a bit of random text that you stick onto a password before you hash and store it. And <laughs> apparently salting is so effective against rainbow tables that a couple modern hashing algorithms, namely bcrypt, uh, there might be a couple others, I can't remember off the top of my head, but they do it right out of the box. Now, with all that being said, uh, honestly, I don't think the advent of salting is really going to kill rainbow tables that much. Not because salts are ineffective or anything like that, but unfortunately, the hashing algorithms this attack was mainly uh, mainly targeted towards, in which most of the rainbow tables uh, floating around right now are based on, or you know, built to attack, like uh, in NTLM, CHA1, MD5, that kind of thing. Uh, they're still pretty widely used, despite the fact that they're really easy to crack already. And Collide? <laughs> Put that alongside the fact that management, like, typically doesn't care that much about security and doesn't really enforce uh, password salting, and you have a pretty good chance of seeing this t uh, technique seeing action for years to come. If you got this far in the video, like, damn, I appreciate you, man. That's super hot. And if I got anything wrong, left something out, or if you're just not a fan of colorful things, please do let me know down in the comments. Uh, I read those a lot. But I'm Black Sheep Spicy, available in all five food groups. Links are in the description. And I hope you learned something today. Have a good one, y'all, all right?